Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to show you the solution to that interesting problem that due to radiation pressure, very small dust particles are blowing, are being blown out of our solar system. And the question to you was, what is approximately the size below which the particles would be blown out? Let's first agree on some numbers, but of course you may have slightly different values, that doesn't worry me. The luminosity of the Sun, which is the number of joules per second, we express that in terms of watts, is about 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts, joules per second. The mass of the Sun is very close to 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. Gravitational constant in SI units and the density of the dust particles we have assumed is 2,000 kilogram per cubic meter, 2 grams per cubic centimeter. Here is the Sun, and at a distance small r is here one dust particle. We have assumed that the dust particle is spherical and it has a radius r. And all the radiation from the Sun is absorbed by that dust particle and that provides the radiation pressure. What would be the number of joules per second for every square meter at a distance small r from the Sun? All the points at a distance small r from the Sun are on a surface with an area 4 pi r squared. So through every square meter of that large spherical surface, the number of joules per second per square meter would be L divided by 4 pi r squared. So the amount of energy that strikes this sphere this little sphere has a cross-sectional area of pi capital R square, is therefore L pi capital R square divided by 4 pi little r square. So that is joules per second. That is the amount of energy per second that strikes that spherical dust particle. The EDT, that's what it is, right? <laughs> How much energy? The second. So this here is the EDT. Now you can watch my lecture 28 of ADO2, where I discuss in great detail the concept of radiation pressure. I use the pointing factor, it's purely It is the physics that you have learned in high school. It is purely classical physics. I couldn't think of that word classical. So in my lecture 28 I solved this problem using purely classical physics. It is much easier and much faster if you use the concept that was the result of Einstein's theory of special relativity, namely that electromagnetic radiation of all kinds comes in photons. These photons have no rest mass, but they do have momentum. And if you accept that for now, even though you may never have seen special relativity, the problem turns into almost nothing. The answer pops out in minutes. 
According to Einstein's theory of special relativity, the energy of a photon is the momentum of that photon times c. So keep in mind, the photons have no mass, no less mass, but they do have momentum. And the momentum is E divided by C. So when these photons are absorbed by this particle, there is a momentum transfer. The amount of momentum change per second is dP dt, and that is a force. So that is the force that we call the radiation pressure force. So dP dt is the force due to radiation pressure. And that is the EDT divided by C. Well, we have here the EDT, and we have here the C. So this is the EDT I have here again. It's exactly this form divided by C. So this is the force due to radiation pressure, because the radiation is absorbed by this particle. What is the gravitational force? The force due to radiation pressure is in this direction. What is the gravitational force between the particle and the sun? Well, that is Newton's theory of, <laughs> of gravity. The mass of the sun times the mass of this particle, which is the volume of the particle times the density, times the gravitational constant divided by small r squared. It shouldn't surprise you that r squared, little r squared, cancels. Because the radiation pressure itself falls off as 1 over r squared, and the gravitational force falls off as 1 over r squared. So the answer of the minimum size of these particles, below which they will be blown out, is in Dependent of how, how far they are away from the sun. So little r plays no role. So, if I make this gravitational force the same as the force due to radiation pressure, I have only one equation with one unknown, which is capital R. And you can solve that by putting those numbers in, and you find that the radius of these spherical dust particles are approximately 2.8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. So roughly one quarter of a micron. I hope you will agree with me <laughs> that by using this simple fact, the problem collapses into almost nothing. But again, watch my lecture 28 of 802. You will find another way purely classical, and you will come, of course, to the same conclusions. All right? Isn't the concept intriguing that particles which have a size smaller than this are blown out of our solar system due to the radiation pressure of the sunlight that they absorb? I have assumed here that it is absorbed. If they were if the radiation were reflected, then the momentum transfer would be twice as high as high have it. But forget that for now. We will assume that it is absorbed. All right. Have a nice day. Take care. And I hope you're not angry at me that I use special relativity. I hope you're not angry at me because if you are, you may not want to be friends with me anymore. But I want to be friends with you, for sure. <laughs> there is something that I didn't mention in my solutions, because I thought it was rather obvious, but I think I should have mentioned it. And so let me do it now. If you take a capital R, the radius of the dust particle, smaller than 2.8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, and you calculate again the force due to radiation pressure and the force due to gravity, you will find that the force due to the radiation pressure is larger 
than the force due to gravity. So the particle is going to be blown out. There's another conceptual way to see this. The force due to radiation pressure is proportional to the cross-sectional area of the particle. Therefore, it is proportional to capital R square. Whereas the force due to gravity is proportional to the mass of the particle, and thus it's proportional to capital R cubed. And so if you make capital R smaller and smaller and smaller, there comes a time that the R square term becomes larger than the R Q term. Okay? I hope this helps. Have a nice day. <laughs> and of course, take care.